This video is sponsored by Deep Cut Studios. For a wide range of fantastic gaming resources such as battle mats, dice trays and pre-painted bases, check out the description below. Hi guys and welcome back to TNG Productions, my name is Tom, we're back with another painting tutorial and this time we're going to be looking at the Disciples of Zeench because they've got a brand new battle tome out and I've got a few models knocking around. These are some Kyric Acolytes, better known as the Eyes of the Nine from the Night Vault set and as you can see we're going to be using the Citadel Contrast range of paints. Now this is for beginner to intermediate painters who are like me who want a quick and easily replicatable result using these contrast paints. I'm by no means a pro but these paints have really helped me uh, up my game so to speak. So as you can see this model has been primed using the Wraith Bone Spray and the first colour we're going in with is Gilliman Flesh. Now you could use any of the flesh colours that you like to go for a darker skin tone. I'm just using this because it's the base one that's used in a lot of the artwork. Now. Ignore, as always, what Citadel say with their one thick coat tagline, treat this like an ink wash. And that means keep it moving with your brush, try and get a nice even set of strokes with it. Avoid it pooling in major areas. And if I'm honest, during this paint job, I probably let it pool a little bit too much by its feet. But just try and keep the paint moving, get a nice even tone. Avoid any kind of puddles forming in areas that aren't the recesses. And as you can see, there's a lot of muscle on this character actually. He's gone to, he's been uh, getting in those gains at the gym. But there's some other characters that have more armor and cloth. Anyway, speaking of armor, we're going to go to Retributor Gold now. Now, annoyingly not a contrast paint because there's no contrast metallics. But I promise we'll be using mainly contrast. Um, this Retributor Gold is perfect. The Zinch, like they're beautiful kind of shifting colors. And we're going to put a contrast paint over this to get that kind of bluey green shimmering tone. So Retributor Gold is a really nice shining color. It's a base paint, so it goes on nice and smoothly. You might want to do two coats, especially on the shields to avoid brush strokes. But you can easily just water down the paint ever so slightly, either with a flow improver or with just plain water to get a nice even consistency. The two thin coats, as uh, the wonderful Duncan, formerly of GW, would say. Um, it's worth me saying as well, I'm using an Army Painter Regiment brush for the majority of this paint job. Every once in a while I dip down to what is the character size brush, I think it's the Kalinsky Masterclass one, that comes free with the £30 set. Um, now when we've got the metal on, we're now going to have to put some ink on it. So I'm using Reichland Flesh Shade for this. Now there is a gloss version available, I believe, that you can use. I don't own it, and um, realistically, in most of the tutorials I've seen, I don't see much of a difference. We're not needing the shine too much, because as I said, we're going to be using a contrast paint to go over the shield and some of the shoulder pads, which will add more colour. So I'm just making sure this goes into the recesses of all of the gold bits. You've got the headpiece, the shoulder pads, the hilts, the weapons, and you can see those studs around the hips, as well as the shield. Make sure we've got a nice, even coverage. Now there's a lot of inks and a lot of contrast here, so making sure that you allow things to dry, it's easy to work on separate areas. So I'm going to be using Black Templar on any of the straps. This guy's got one on his torso. Some of the other models have belts that you might want to use this Black Templar on. Being very, very careful and using uh, a slightly smaller brush to be as neat as I possibly can. With contrast, it's always better to start with your lighter tones than work to your darker ones, but that does mean you have to be very careful and just kind of make sure you take nice even breaths, listen to some lovely Zen music, brace your hands on the table and just be nice and careful with it. Now it is important to let these paints dry fully before moving on. So as you can see now, I'm going to Lead Belcher, which is going to be the metallic of the sword blade. Um, if you wanted to use a contrast paint instead of Lead Belcher or another metallic, you could use, uh, I think it's Basilicanum Grey, which is the non-metallic metal grey colour. Um, by all means, I'm just using this because I'm going to ink it in a second using uh, some black ink. But to be honest, you could do the same thing with the Basilicanum. Making sure I get the buckle that goes across his chest. Some of the other characters have got uh, little adornments that attach to their shields. Now I'm going on to the tabard now. And Zinch is uh, very well known for his shifting plans, you know, all going to plan. So I'm going to be using a combination of Ultramarine's Blue and Magos, 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 Purple. And what I'm going to do is, at the top of the tabards, I'm going to apply the Ultramarine Blue. And while it's still wet, I'm then going to clean my brush, use Magos Purple, put that at the bottom of the tabard, and basically work them in. It's a really rudimentary attempt by me to do some wet blending, and you've probably seen it in other tutorials like the Sylvan F1. Just moving the colours into each other, and you can shift with this as long as the paint's still wet. So the more Magos you pull up, the lighter it will turn the transition, the more Ultramarine you pull down, the darker it will, naturally. And this will just get us that kind of like, you know, as you can see here, shifting colour palette that's so typical with Zinch. Now that's going to take a while to dry because there's two contrast paints on it. So while we do that, I'm going to put some Nuln Oil ink on the blade. 
just to darken that down. Again, if you've used the Basilicanum yourself, we've used another ink, you don't need to worry. I've put a little bit on the leather straps just to kind of darken them as well. To be honest, Black Templar is fantastic on its own. It's a preference thing here. And as you can see now, my gold has dried. So now let's go on to the really, really cool part. This is Talisar Blue. And Talisar Blue looks very, very blue in the pot. And when you apply it, though, if you apply it over this gold color, it comes out in this kind of like greeny, jadey color, which is just beautiful. Now, there are more traditional ways of painting the Zinch kind of shield colors in a lighter blue, but I really like this effect. Now, what I will say to you is you'll have to be very neat around the pattern. You can see me wiping away any excess. And you may wish to consider doing two coats or even better, which is what I did here. I did one coat straight from the pot and then I did about two to one contrast medium to Talazar blue over the top to try and get a nice smooth finish. You can see that beautiful green smooth shimmer. Now allowing that to dry, we're gonna go onto the robes. Now white in the past used to be a nightmare to paint. I was terrible with it, but thank God there's apothecary white that exists now. So we're gonna apply that to all of the clothing that has yet to be in colored. So basically everything that's not that kind of tabardy bit at the front. It'll darken it down, it'll add some grey areas, and all we're going to do is dry brush it over the top of that a little bit later. So you can see it just brings that colour tone down, and you can see a beautiful green colour on the shoulder pads and the shield, I do love it. Now while everything was drying again, I decided to do the base, it's quite simple, base of Ashen Grey with an Norn Oil Wash, and then a dry brush of Dawnstone, and I've just put some Steel Legion Drab around the rim of the base, but obviously you can paint and base your models however you wish, just in case you wanted to do these ones. So that's it in terms of the contrast paints. We're now going to go on to a bit of dry brushing. So I'm going to start with Lead Belcher. Going back to that, you could use any metallic you want. And that is going to go on all of our, obviously, metallic areas, such as the blade, such as any of the gold areas. And I'm also going to put a little bit on the Talisar shoulder pad and shield, just to make it look a little bit battle damaged. It's entirely up to you whether you want to do that or leave it. You could just focus on the gold and the silver but i've just put a little bit on just to add a bit more of that kind of shimmering effect the other model that you saw at the start which you'll see again at the end i didn't do it so you can compare the two then and see which you can prefer but you can see that silver just picks out the edges of the armor and the shield and just gives it a little bit of a highlight and definition now finally there's plenty more contrast uh, paints you could use or washes or br dry brushing but the most simple one i'm going to use here is author and gray you could use screaming skull if you wanted a slightly more earthy tone and that is going to go across the tabard across the white areas there's a lot more white areas on so many of the models just to bring those up i'm going to put a tiny bit over the belts but what i've made sure to do here is get the majority of the paint off my brush so i'm only putting on a little bit more less is more with dry brushing going against the grain and you can always add more later rather than going on heavy so here you can see our final product, here's the one that we have prepared, and you can see you've got some really cool shifting colours between the purple and the blue and the tabard, and that wonderful greeny talisar blue over the gold metallics. Now as I said, the other model, you can see a little bit more of the dry brushing for the whites in a second, and you'll also be able to see what that kind of talisar looks without too much silver over. So here you can see uh, with the white, the Ulthan Grey uh, has kind of really picked out that apothecary white to where that's kind of contrasted and highlighted, and you can see the talisar is less silvery coloured. So yeah, I hope that's been really useful for you guys and will allow you to get your wonderful mischievous acolytes painted up and ready to go. I've been Tom from TNG Productions, and if you've got any questions at all, feel free to put them in the comments below. And if not, have a fantastic day. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching our content. It means the world to us. If you'd like to see some more videos, they should be over here. And if you'd like to support our channel, keep these lights on. You can find links to our Patreon and merchandise in the description below. See you later.